Now, this was a bit of a surprise to find locally. It's a voice-controlled light. And instead of coming from one of the usual online sellers, it came from the local Jack uh, Home Stores on the Isle of Man. And it says LED lamp with voice control, and it's got various things. Turn on the light, turn off the light, change colour. And I was thinking, really? Do you have to tie this into, like, the Amazon system or the Google system? Uh, but no, it is completely autonomous, because I have tested it. I've also uh, explored other options here uh, with voice commands and found it's got uh, another set of voice commands. So let me demonstrate a couple of the voice commands. I think maybe I shall uh, put this up like this. Actually, no, well, I'll just angle it like this. Yes, or something like that. No, that's not working. Uh, and then I'll turn the light off so you can see what it does. So let's brighten the image up a bit. I'll probably regret that. Yes, I regretted it. Let's... Uh, Put it over to there, right, okay. So the voice commands are, turn off the light, turn on the light, change colour, change colour, change colour. Uh, and the undocumented uh, commands are, dim the light, dim the light, dim the light, dim the light, dim the light. And that shows it reached the bottom. It took me a while to work out what the opposite was. Brighten the light. Brighten the light. Brighten the light. Brighten the light. And then I think this is the last step. Brighten the light. And it shows, it blinks to show it's the last step. Uh, change colour. Change colour. Turn off the light. OK, watch your eyes. The light is about to come back. So how interesting is that for something that cost £5? That's ridiculous. It's like something out of the future. I don't know if you guys saw that video that was on YouTube, floating about on YouTube. Self-import agencies, PO Box 37211, Amsterdam. Okay, let's get that off. Oh, incidentally, ugh, that didn't work too well. Uh, 300 milliamps at the full uh, intensity, all the LEDs lit, and standby current is about 10 milliamps. No. So there was this... Uh, video showing a home voice control system but it was like back in the 80s and i don't even know how they achieved that because it would be super complicated it's going to come apart easily i don't think there's any hidden screws i think it's just going to be a brute force again but that was a hugely expensive system it was very basic and you had to teach it all your voice commands this one has it all built in there's the microphone there's the circuit board um and, uh, well, you know what happens next? God, there's not much. What is this little chip? It's got a number on it. That's a good start. Uh, one moment, please. I'm going to reverse engineer this. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's get up close and personal. I shall zoom in just a little bit. This is where I zoom in far too much. I usually do. That will do. Mystery chip, I'm afraid. It's a GL chip. I've got the number written down on the schematic. You can check that out yourself. I drew a blank on this, but this isn't a surprise. It's one of those uh, chips that is manufactured for mass-produced items and is not available to the likes of us. The USB power supply comes on here, ground and positive, and the positive goes to this group of parallel resistors. 3 times 15 ohms gives a total of 5 ohms, and that's what limits the current to the LEDs. The positive supply also goes to the end of this resistor, and with that capacitor there forms a little power supply, stable power supply for the chip. And then there's other capacitors that are used to provide a filtered uh, supply for uh, the microphone and also uh, uh, internal, presumably an internal voltage reference. I'll show you that in the schematic. The microphone in this case is mounted off-board, but there is a position here to actually use a presumably surface-mounted microphone. And then our favourite MOSFETs, A2SHB, are used for switching the LEDs themselves with the little uh, pull-down resistor on the gate and also the drive resistor. OK, straight to the schematic we go. And uh, let's zoom in even closer. So here's the very short and catchy number, GLAB22BP15683-69D4. That drew a blank. I'll just square that off so it looks more like a D. Here's the incoming USB supply. There's the power supply, the filtering, a 20-ohm resistor and a, a capacitor to provide filtered supply to the aforementioned chip. 
Here's the little capacitor down here that provides a stable voltage reference, presumably inside, and then this capacitor here provides a power supply for the microphone. And I'm guessing that this might be part of the automatic gain control, that the voltage across this capacitor may be varied depending on uh, the ambient volume level. But this resistor then forms a potential divider between that point uh, and ground via the uh, microphone and the microphone basically has a little MOSFET inside it with a capacitive plate moves backwards and forwards and the MOSFET amplifies that signal so it acts a bit like a resistor and any uh, sound is then converted into an undulating voltage which is then coupled back into the chip via this capacitor. I'm going to write zero volts here and five volts here just for the sake of completeness. There are the three resistors in parallel providing power to the LEDs. That's something I should have done. That's something I should have done just for just for niceness. I should have said there's the cold white LED. I'll call it, color it yellow for cold white because that's what the phosphor looks like. And the warm white, which is a more orangier phosphor. How many LEDs are there? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, and I'd guess 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 of each of the warm white and cold white. But the LED, these represent the parallel clusters of 12. I'll just write, now I've counted them, times 12 and times 12. Uh, 12 LEDs in parallel, and they go down to the MOSFETs. The chip drives the MOSFETs on with a 100 ohm resistor to the gate, and then there's a 4K7 resistor down to the zero volt rail just to make sure that they are always kept off in a stable state, particularly if the chip uh, does anything like just is booting up or something like that just to avoid a, a flash although when you plug this in initially it does just do a quick flash it well it doesn't just do a quick flash let me just plug it in right now and show you what it does it does this it does a quick flash now it dims up did it dim up in the last setting is that hold on one moment please uh confirmed it does remember the last setting so there must be a bit of Flash memory in there as well. That's odd. Change colour. So there's the cold white. Uh, change colour. I'll bring both uh, LEDs on. Change colour. That's all the LEDs on. I'll just let it... I'll just pause for a moment just to give it some time to think about that. And then I shall unplug it. And then wait for a while. And then plug it back in. Yeah, it came up in the last setting. Uh, light off. I don't think it'll store the offsetting. I think it's just going to store the colour. Yeah, it just stored the colour. It's come on at a low intensity, though. Uh, interesting. Right. Novel. But there we have it. Really not much to say because I don't know what that chip is. But I'm pretty sure that we've discovered GL chips in other products in the past, like Bluetooth key fobs or the Bluetooth, because this seems to be the specialty Bluetooth, Bluetooth type stuff, but also uh, the Bluetooth uh, RGB lighting controllers, where it was a massively complex processor for uh, like a couple of pounds. It was just ridiculous. Uh, that just seems to be their speciality. But there we have it. It's an unexpected product to find... Uh, in a local shop um, and it's bizarre that such a cheap item um, with that little 16 pin chip of which only 7 pins are actually used is it capable of recognising several words spoken in uh, various sort of uh, frequencies you know high pitch voice, low pitch voice very interesting, very neat and just slightly futuristic <laughs>